Babyface Nelson, The Battle of Barrington, Part 2. In the midst of the gun battle, Chase heard Nelson complain that his weapon was jamming and the wounded bank robber swapped it out for a 351 Winchester rifle that had been customized to fire fully automatic. Despite his grievous wound, Nelson moved from behind the car and advanced towards the agents while firing the Winchester. Two of his bullets struck Cowley in the chest and stomach, knocking him over. Buckshot pellets from Hollis's shotgun then struck Nelson in the legs and knocked him down. As Nelson regained his feet, Hollis, possibly already wounded, moved to better cover behind a utility pole. As he drew his service pistol, Hollis was mortally wounded by a round to the head. Nelson staggered over Hollis's body, aimed his smoking rifle at the agent's fallen form for a moment, then limped towards the agent's Hudson. Nelson drove the car over to the disabled Ford and loaded it with the guns and supplies that was located inside. Nelson let Chase get behind the wheel of the agent's car and the two men and Helen Gillis fled the scene. According to the Cook County Coroner, Nelson had been shot a total of nine times. A single and ultimately fatal machine gun slug had struck his abdomen and eight of Hollis's shotgun pellets had hit his legs. Later news reports inaccurately gave his number of wounds as 17, possibly due to a memorandum released by J. Edgar Hoover stating 17 wounds to Nelson's body. After telling his wife, I'm done for, Nelson gave directions as Chase drove them to a safe house on Walnut Street in Wimmet. Nelson died in bed with his wife at his side at 7.35 p.m. Hollis was pronounced dead soon after arriving at the hospital. At a different hospital, Callie lived long enough to confer briefly with Melvin Purvis and have surgery before succumbing to a stomach wound similar to Nelson's. Following a tip from a telephone line employee, Nelson's body was discovered wrapped in a Native American patterned blanket by FBI agent Walter Walsh in front of St. Paul's Lutheran Church Cemetery. Nelson's widow wandered the streets of Chicago as a fugitive for a couple days before finally surrendering on Thanksgiving Day. She served a year in jail for harboring her husband. John Paul Chase was apprehended later on and served a term in Alcatraz for his involvement. Make sure to like.